Question 1. What is one of the primary benefits of network automation in service provider environments? A. Increased manual configuration, B. Higher operational costs, C. Enhanced scalability and agility, D. Reduced network downtime. The correct answer is C. Enhanced scalability and agility. Explanation. One of the primary benefits of network automation in service provider environments is enhanced scalability and agility, allowing for faster provisioning of services, improved resource utilization, and quicker response to changing demands. Question 2. Which of the following is a common use case for network automation in service provider environments? A. Manual provisioning of network devices. B. Reactive troubleshooting. C. Dynamic bandwidth allocation. D. Static IP address assignment. The correct answer is C. Dynamic bandwidth allocation. Explanation. Dynamic bandwidth allocation is a common use case for network automation in service provider environments, enabling the allocation of bandwidth based on demand, traffic patterns, and service level agreements, SLAs, dynamically. Question 3. What role does intent-based networking, IBN, play in service provider network automation? A. Manual configuration of network devices. B. Dynamic creation of network policies. C. Passive monitoring of network traffic. D. Limited scalability. The correct answer is B. Dynamic creation of network policies. Explanation. Intent-based networking, IBN, plays a crucial role in service provider network automation by enabling the dynamic creation of network policies based on high-level business intents, allowing for automated and adaptive network behavior. Question 4. Which automation tool is commonly used for orchestrating service provider network functions and virtualized infrastructure? A. Ansible. B. Puppet. C. Chef. D. SaltStack. The correct answer is A. Ansible. Explanation. Ansible is a commonly used automation tool for orchestrating service provider network functions and virtualized infrastructure due to its simplicity, agentless architecture, and support for infrastructure as code, IAC, practices. Question 5. What is the primary goal of network automation in service provider environments? A. Increased manual intervention. B. Reduced network visibility, C. Streamlined operations, D. Higher network complexity. The correct answer is C. Streamlined operations. Explanation. The primary goal of network automation in service provider environments is to streamline operations by automating repetitive tasks, reducing human errors, and improving overall network efficiency and reliability. Question 6. Which HTTP method is typically used to retrieve data from a RESTful API? A. Post. B. Get. C. Put. D. Delete. The correct answer is B. Get. Explanation. The get method in HTTP is typically used to retrieve data from a RESTful API. It is a safe and idempotent operation that retrieves the representation of a resource without modifying it. Question 7. What is the significance of using RESTful APIs for automation in service provider network infrastructure? A. Increased complexity of automation workflows. B. Limited scalability. C. Facilitation of interoperability and integration. D. Higher network latency. The correct answer is C. Facilitation of interoperability and integration. Explanation. Using RESTful APIs for automation and service provider network infrastructure facilitates interoperability and integration by providing a standardized and language-agnostic means of communication between different systems and devices. This enables seamless automation workflows and interoperability between heterogeneous network elements. Question 8. Which protocol is commonly used for automating MPLSL3 VPN provisioning in service provider networks? A. BGP. Border Gateway Protocol. B. OSPF. Open Shortest Path First. C. RIP. 
routing information protocol d is is intermediate system to intermediate system the correct answer is a bgp border gateway protocol explanation bgp border gateway protocol is commonly used for automating mplsl3 vpn layer 3 virtual private network provisioning and service provider networks bgp enables the distribution of vpn routing information between provider edge pe routers facilitating the creation of vpn services for customers question 9 what is the role of Yang data models in network programmability for MPLS and segment routing? A. They enable the automation of MPLS traffic engineering. B. They define the structure and attributes of MPLS and segment routing configurations. C. They optimize network performance through advanced routing algorithms. D. They provide backward compatibility with legacy routing protocols. The correct answer is B. They define the structure and attributes of MPLS and segment routing configurations. Explanation. Young data models define the structure and attributes of MPLS and segment routing configurations, providing a standardized way to automate network provisioning and management tasks. These data models ensure consistency and interoperability across different network devices and automation tools. Question 10. Which technology enables the automation of MPLSL2 VPN, Layer 2 Virtual Private, Network, Services in Service Provider Networks? A. VPLS, Virtual Private LAN Service. B. VXLAN, Virtual Extensible LAN. C. MPLST, Multi-Protocol Label Switching, Traffic Engineering. D. GRE, Generic Routing Encapsulation. The correct answer is A, VPLS, Virtual Private LAN Service. Explanation. VPLS, Virtual Private LAN Service, enables the automation of MPLSL2 VPN services in service provider networks. VPLS extends a Layer 2 LAN segment over an MPLS network, allowing multiple customer sites to communicate with each other as if they were connected to the same LAN. Question 11. How does network programmability contribute to the deployment of segment routing SR, based services in service provider networks? A. By simplifying the configuration of MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. B. By enabling dynamic control plane manipulation of MPLS labels. C. By automating the provisioning and management of SR-based forwarding paths. D. By optimizing the convergence time of MPLS-based routing protocols. The correct answer is C, by automating the provisioning and management of SR-based forwarding paths. Explanation. Network programmability enables the automation of provisioning and management tasks for segment routing, SR, based services in service provider networks. This includes the automated configuration of SR-based forwarding paths, reducing the operational overhead and ensuring consistent service delivery. Question 12. What is the primary advantage of using Network Function Virtualization NFV, in service provider networks? A. Reduced hardware costs B. Improved network security C. Faster data transmission speeds D. Enhanced quality of service The correct answer is A. Reduced hardware costs Explanation Network Function Virtualization NFV allows network functions, such as firewalls, routers, and load balancers, to run as software instances on commodity hardware. This reduces the reliance on expensive proprietary hardware appliances, resulting in significant cost savings for service providers. Question 13. Which automation tool is commonly used for orchestrating and managing virtual network functions, VNFs, in NFV deployments? A. Docker. B. Kubernetes, C. OpenStack, D. VMware vSphere. The correct answer is C. OpenStack. Explanation. 
OpenStack is a popular open-source cloud computing platform that provides tools for orchestrating and managing virtualized infrastructure, including virtual network functions, VNFs, in NFV deployments. Question 14. What role do APIs play in NFV automation? A. They enable the creation of virtual private networks, VPNs, B. They facilitate communication between virtual network functions, VNFs, and orchestration systems, C. They optimize network traffic routing algorithms, D. They ensure compliance with regulatory standards. The correct answer is B. They facilitate communication between virtual network functions, VNFs, and orchestration systems. Explanation. APIs, Application Programming Interfaces, enable communication between different components of an NFV architecture, such as virtual network functions, VNFs, and orchestration systems. This allows for automated provisioning, management, and scaling of VNFs within the network. Question 15. Which NFV concept involves dynamically scaling virtual network functions, VNFs, based on network traffic patterns? A. Fault tolerance, B. Elasticity, C. Load balancing, D. Redundancy. The correct answer is B. Elasticity. Explanation. Elasticity in NFV refers to the ability of the network to dynamically scale resources, such as virtual network functions, VNFs, up or down based on changing network traffic patterns or demand. This ensures optimal resource utilization and performance. Question 16. What is the primary purpose of service chaining in service provider networks? A. To increase network latency, B. To optimize network bandwidth usage, C. To automate end-to-end -end service provisioning, D. To enhance network security. The correct answer is C. To automate end-to-end -end service provisioning. Explanation. Service chaining in service provider networks involves automating the sequential execution of network services to fulfill specific service requests or requirements. This automation enhances operational efficiency by streamlining the end-to-end -end service provisioning process. Question 17. How does NFV automation contribute to the agility of service provider networks? A. By increasing network latency, B. By reducing the need for network upgrades, C. By decreasing network flexibility, D. By limiting the scalability of network services. The correct answer is B. By reducing the need for network upgrades. Explanation. NFV automation streamlines the deployment and management of network functions, reducing the time and effort required for network upgrades. This enhances the agility of service provider networks by enabling them to quickly adapt to changing requirements and market conditions without costly hardware upgrades. Question 18. Which tool or technology is commonly used for service instantiation in service provider networks? A. Puppet, B. Chef, C. Kubernetes, D. Ansible. The correct answer is D. Ansible. Explanation. Ansible is an automation tool commonly used for service instantiation in service provider networks. It allows network operators to define and automate the deployment and configuration of network services in a scalable and repeatable manner. Question 19. What is the purpose of lifecycle management in service provider networks? A. To monitor network traffic patterns, B. To automate the deployment of network devices, C. To ensure the availability and performance of network services, D. To optimize network routing algorithms. The correct answer is C. To ensure the availability and performance of network services. Explanation. Lifecycle management in service provider networks involves managing the entire lifecycle of network services, from provisioning and deployment to monitoring, maintenance, and decommissioning. Its primary goal is to ensure the availability, reliability, and performance of network services throughout their life cycle. Question 20. What is the primary benefit of using segment routing, SR, in service provider networks? A. 
Reduced complexity in network provisioning, b. Improved scalability for large-scale networks, c. Enhanced security through advanced encryption techniques, d. Faster data transmission speeds. The correct answer is a. Reduced complexity in network provisioning. Explanation. Segment routing, SR, simplifies network provisioning by allowing the forwarding path to be pre-computed and encoded within the packet header. This reduces the need for maintaining complex routing tables and improves network efficiency. Question 21. What is the primary purpose of model-driven telemetry, MDT, in service provider networks? A. To optimize network routing protocols, B. To collect real-time operational data from network devices, C. To enhance network security through advanced encryption techniques, D. To automate device configuration tasks. The correct answer is B. To collect real-time operational data from network devices. Explanation. Model-driven telemetry, MDT, is used in service provider networks to collect real-time operational data from network devices. It enables the streaming of telemetry data in near real-time, providing insights into network performance, health, and resource utilization. Question 22. Which protocol is commonly used for streaming telemetry data in model-driven telemetry, MDT? A. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. B. NETCONF, Network Configuration Protocol. C. GRPC, Google Remote Procedure Call. D. FTP, File Transfer Protocol. The correct answer is C. GRPC, Google Remote Procedure Call. Explanation. GRPC, Google Remote Procedure Call, is commonly used for streaming telemetry data in model-driven telemetry, MDT. It provides a lightweight and efficient mechanism for transmitting telemetry data in near real-time, enabling network operators to monitor and analyze network performance metrics. Question 23. What is the purpose of NETCONF in Cisco IOS XR devices? A. To provide a mechanism for real time network monitoring, B. To automate the retrieval and manipulation of configuration data, C. To enhance network security through advanced encryption techniques, D. To optimize network performance by reducing packet loss. The correct answer is B to automate the retrieval and manipulation of configuration data. Explanation. NETCONF, Network Configuration Protocol, in Cisco IOS XR devices is used to automate the retrieval and manipulation of configuration data. It provides a standardized mechanism for configuring network devices programmatically, enabling automation of configuration management tasks. Question 24. Which scripting language is commonly used for automating configuration tasks on Cisco IOS XR devices? A. JavaScript. B. Ruby. C. Python. D. Perl. The correct answer is C. Python. Explanation. Python is commonly used for automating configuration tasks on Cisco IOS XR devices due to its simplicity, readability, and extensive libraries for interacting with network devices and APIs. Python scripts can be used to automate various configuration tasks, making it a popular choice among network automation engineers. Question 25. Which protocol is commonly used in Cisco IOS XR devices for remote device configuration and management? A. SSH, Secure Shell. B. FTP, File Transfer Protocol. C. Telnet, D, Radius, Remote Authentication Dial in User Service. The correct answer is A, SSH, Secure Shell. Explanation. Secure Shell, SSH, is commonly used in Cisco IOS XR devices for remote device configuration and management. SSH provides a secure encrypted connection for accessing and configuring network devices remotely, ensuring confidentiality and integrity of data during transmission. Question 26. What is the main characteristic of RESTful web services? A. 
Statefulness, B. Asynchronous communication, C. Protocol independence, D. Tight coupling. The correct answer is C. Protocol independence. Explanation. The main characteristic of RESTful web services is protocol independence, meaning that they can be implemented using various underlying protocols, such as HTTP, without being tied to a specific communication protocol. Question 27. What is the primary benefit of using REST APIs in Cisco IOS XR devices for automation? A. Ensuring backward compatibility with legacy protocols. B. Simplifying integration with third-party applications and tools. C. Providing enhanced encryption for secure communication. D. Optimizing network performance and reducing latency. The correct answer is B. Simplifying integration with third-party applications and tools. Explanation. REST APIs in Cisco IOS XR devices simplify integration with third-party applications and tools by providing a standardized, language-agnostic interface for programmatically interacting with network devices. This simplifies automation tasks and enables seamless integration with various automation platforms and tools. Question 28. Which protocol is commonly used in RESTful web services for accessing and manipulating resources? A. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. B. SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. C. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. D. SSH, Secure Shell. The correct answer is C. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Explanation RESTful web services commonly use the HTTP. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, protocol for accessing and manipulating resources. HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE are utilized to perform operations on resources exposed by REST APIs. Question 29. Which technology provides a standardized data modeling language for describing network elements, configurations, and operational states? A. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. B. NETCONF, Network Configuration Protocol. C. YAML, YAML Ain't Markup Language. D. Yang, Yet Another Next Generation. The correct answer is D. Yang, Yet Another Next Generation. Explanation Yang is a standardized data modeling language used to describe the structure of network elements, configurations, and operational states. It provides a formal and machine-readable way to define data models, making it easier to automate network device configuration and management. Question 30. What is the primary purpose of application programming interfaces, APIs, in the context of service provider network infrastructure? A. To enhance network security. B. To provide a graphical user interface. Way. For network management. C to enable programmatic interaction with network devices and services, D, to encrypt network traffic. The correct answer is C, to enable programmatic interaction with network devices and services. Explanation. Application programming interfaces, APIs, in the context of service provider network infrastructure serve the primary purpose of enabling programmatic interaction with network devices and services. APIs expose functionalities and data, allowing automation tools and applications to interact with network elements programmatically, 